fit to deliver in this capacity. Okay. So today, by special grace of God, I will be, I will, I will be anchoring this uh, evening stream on exploring careers in data management. Can you all see my screen now? Hello. Yes, yes we can. Okay. We have a topic here uh, titled "Exploring Careers in Data Management." And um, before then, as I was earlier introduced, my name is Happiness Akabike, I'm Senior Professional Member of the Institute by God's Grace. And today I've been given the opportunity to share my experience or to share what I know about data management. I don't know if it's still necessary for me to go about introducing the Institute of Information Management as the president have done that. Sorry, um, I'm not sharing my. You can. I can go on. You can proceed. With your... Hello, yes. sir. Okay. Let's proceed. All right. Um, I'm then not. Kindly, uh, Hello. Kindly expand your your slides. Okay. 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 Up, Hold up. I'm doing it. Um, let me stop sharing and do what I'm supposed to do first. No, you can do it from here. Uh, is, uh, okay, sorry. Can you see it now? Hello? Is it clear now? Hello? Can everyone see my screen now? Please go ahead. Okay. Um, the president has actually introduced the Institute of Information Management. So let me continue from the professional um, and master certification programs that are available in the Institute. The Institute on its own is a career acquisition center which uh, when you as a member, if you join, there are a whole lot of opportunity to scale up, a whole lot of opportunity to learn new skills and to satisfy yourself in different areas of information and data management. And as you can see here, we have a Institute of Information Management Professional Certification from one to three, which is Information Management Professional one, Information Management Professional two to three. And we have a Institute of Information Management master certification programs ranging from certified certify record and information management professionals, and then certified health information management professional, certified document management professional, certified information security professional, certified geographical information system professional. So these are various programs and certifications available with the institutes. And so we are encouraged as members to leverage on this to certify what we know and the competence to you know, global and maybe local opportunity. That's the whole essence of it because information management Africa is a global um, body that is well organized for what it does in data and information management. So without wasting much of our time, I want to go into the topic full data management, as we all know, data has become the new oil. I call it the new oil because with the advent of internet, with the increase of um, people, uh, um, presence of people online and with the increase of transactions going on across the globe, data has become so relevant that organizations, individuals cannot do without data. Data is the is the is the brand behind every decision making so that is why data management has become so vital and relevant that as a person you should be queued into this either to know it or to go into it as a career as today we are treating various careers in data management but before then i want to explain what data management is all about from what i have in my slide here data management can be defined as a practice of collecting organizing protecting and storing an organization data so it can be analyzed for business decision. So the whole aim of data is for 
it to be collected, organized, protected, and stored for management decision. So as a firm, it, is, it has become so relevant and paramount that organizations need to collect vital data and should have means or streamline method or maybe streamline ways of collecting and organizing data, storing it, securing it, and then retrieving it later for business analysis, which could lead to maybe some certain management decisions that could lead to profit at the end of the whole thing. So data, without data, I don't think there is no um, organization can make progress. So that is the essence of this uh, uh, topic this afternoon. In other way, we can define data management as to be referred uh, to professional practice of constructing and maintaining a framework for ingesting, storing, mining, and archiving the data that are integral to a modern business. That is to say, there should be a framework. So it's, it's another, another way of defining is trying to construct a framework. This framework can come in different form. It can come in different, uh, with the use of different tools to you know, construct your data, maintain a framework that could be used to retrieve this data, store this data, mine and archive this data for, int, um, for for gov, uh, this, um, for companies or individuals what decision hello are you with me hello we are with you okay we are with you ma we are yes, here we are with you um i'm still sharing my screen it's like you are sharing something else <laughs> Okay. I think your, your slide is not moving, so we can share from our hand here. The technical team will share. From okay, it's not moving from your. It's moving here. Okay, all right, share from your end. I don't know. It's not moving. It's moving from my end. Yeah. Uh, okay. Some people are sending messages to us. That some people are not seeing it. Yes. So we'll oh. run the slide on your behalf. It's all right. Yes, yes, ma. That would be better. Let me stop it. Okay, you have already so stopped it. Where are you now? She's at, uh, she's talking about data management. She was still introducing the concept. Oh, oh you have the page, right? Yes, the page is up. All right, please go on, Ma. Okay. Hope you can see the screen yourself. I'm not seeing the screen. No. Okay, I can see it now. I can see it now. Okay, so like I was saying, what data management is all about. Data management, I, as I said earlier, I've tried to define, I give, I've given first definition of data management. That data management is relevant in a time like this where there is increased use of internet, there is increased use of uh, information management in different sectors. And that is why it's becoming so relevant for decision making. In fact, it is the hallmark of companies' decision making. Without data, um, um, data collection, without data archiving and data protection, I don't think uh, companies can be able to make relevant decisions about the usage of data. I've tried to make, um, I gave two different divisions of data management. And I also mentioned that it is also a professional practice of constructing and maintaining a framework for ingesting, storing, mining, and archiving the data in integral to a modern business. Give me the next slide. Hello? Hello? Yes, please. Give me the next slide. I can't see the next slide. Hello? Hello, are you there? It's coming up. It's coming up. Okay. Okay. Now, why data management in a time like this? It is a way no fat, as we all know. 
that in this digital age that data is a king. You are trying to log into um 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 you, you are doing a project, you need to search for information online. You are you are doing anything, you need to collect data, you need to do uh data collection in one way or the other. This data collection needs to be secure. So because of this, organizations have come up with different frameworks. They've come up with different applications that can be used to secure this data and also to retrieve it and use it as a when do. It has become the most important asset of, asset of organization. And that is why you see hackers, they are desperately after data. For instance, now you see that um, um, all these criminals make use of people's information online. They exploit people's information online to steal and to do all sorts of things. That's why you see them create a whole lot of uh, you know, on, uh, um, links that are not encrypted, links that are not secured. They, 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 uh, they share the links in different WhatsApp groups or in different online platforms for people to you know, click with their phone to be able to mine their data. Hello? I've not finished the other slide and you're showing this. So they, 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 they steal people's information, exploit them, you know, to take advantage of vital information about them. That's why you see them most time when they share those links, they hack into people's phone, hack into people's uh, mobile banking apps, steal money there, do a whole lot of things that, you know, keep people stranded. And that is why it is very, very vital that as, the digital age has become paramount and it has come to stay that people need to, you know, form a framework on which their data could be what secured, organized and retrieved for proper analysis as that when do. And we individuals too should be careful of the kind of data we use, where we slot in our data and the way we, you know, manage what belongs to us online so that we don't, you know, expose ourselves to you know, threats that could be a very uh, big, you know, that can incur serious loss for us in the future. So it is the foundation of information and the basis on which people make decisions. Hence, it will follow that if data is accurate, complete, organized, and consistent, it will contribute to the growth of what organization. So what I, why data is very, very, data management is very, very important is because most decision makers like, you know, business analysts and, uh, you know, company owners take proper decision based on data. No decisions can be, no, no decision can accurately be, you know, taking place in any firm without data. So it is through people's records, people's information that you'll be able to know what to do and what to do next. Or to even know the right product to begin to push to the public. It's for what people are searching online that you begin to know how to, you know, what you can publish online or what you can, you know, you know, market to the right audience based on the kind of information that I'm looking for. Let me have the next slide. Hello? Hello? Yes, the slide is coming through soon now. Okay. Please give us a minute. Are you there? I see it all. Okay. You missed the slide. Okay. Okay. Uh, you can see that there are several careers in data management because of the increase in the use of data or maybe the relevance of data in society. So many uh, opportunities and careers have, have emerged in the area of data. And some of those opportunities is what I'm going to list here. I have one software implementation consultant. Um, so we have a database administrator, information security analyst, market research analyst, software quality control, data analyst, machine learning engineer, 
business intelligence analysts, logistic analysts, and so many of them. The list is so many. So many of them. There are so many career and so many opportunities in, in data management are still emerging because the uh, data management or that information management you know, field is a very wide field. It is it's increasing on a regular basis because of the use of information, the way information is uh, spreading, the way information is coming out on a regular basis. Let me see the next slide. Ah, second time. All right. Now, rules of software implementation consultants. The essence of knowing these rules is for you to know how to, you know, dive into it. In a nutshell, because they have so many rules, but this summary uh, part of what they do as a software consultant. What software consultant does is that they learn clients' requirement. They come to an organization, maybe firm that are still paper based. Firm that are still paper based. They have not translated uh, to. They've not computerized. They are still running the other time manner. So what they come is that they learn their requirements, translate them to process changes, suggest best client solution. So the essence of the the, the role of a software implementation consultant is they suggest they learn your requirements try to suggest best way to translate from paper to what maybe computer or to computerize, best way to computerize. They also set up an optimized infrastructure, install the application or deploy it, implement it and train clients on how to use it. That's what software implementation consultant does. And so um, some of the salary I quoted here is not Nigerian based salary, it's USC on a, a, a random selection what their salary looks like, <laughs> starting from beginner to uh, an experience or expert level. That's what the salary range. You can see that uh, as a software implementation consultant, you have a very good opportunity to make money and to take good care of yourself. Let me see the next slide. The next slide. Okay. Uh, requirements and qualification to become a software implementation consultant, one. To become, you need to be a, a obtain at least a bachelor degree or equivalent, because you know that we are in a world where people need to understand that you are qualified before you do anything. It's not as though you cannot learn all these things on your own and do it, but it's not acceptable in our society. We are in a society where you need to be, you know, prove competence by certification. You need to be satisfied in what you are doing so that you can stand the chance to even do it, even if you don't know it. Even if you know it and you are not satisfied, you cannot have the chances of doing it. So you need to obtain a bachelor degree, then try to you know, um, obtain experience in software implementation and deployment by maybe working with a, a software implementation deployment personnel. Try to learn the way they work, try to learn some of the tools they work with. There are several tools they work with. They work with Excel, they work with Microsoft, and um, um, uh, uh, they work with SQL, a different kind of database structure and operating system. So you need to learn some of those tools they work with. Then the person need to have a consulting experience because when you come to a firm, the first thing you stand in, uh, you stand in as a consultant. You are a consultant because the person will be asking you some certain questions based on software related and implementation related, how to transition from paper to a, a, a computer. So you need to be a very good consultant. You need to know how to answer their question. You need to also know how to draft out their problem because some of these clients, what they're looking for is a problem solver. Who is that person that will mine our problem and then prepare a solution? So you need to stand it as a consultant and know how to mine their problem, uh, problem and then prepare the right solution. Then you know that. They are going to win the class. So project planning or management experience. Then you know that most times these are going to be a project. You need to plan it, get a team. You're not going to do it alone. You have to, you need to have a team because an implementation of software is not a one day something. It depends on the volume of the firm. It depends on uh, the volume of their data or the volume of their transaction or information. We determine how many weeks or months the implementation will take place. So you need to be a good planner. You need to plan yourself very, very well and have bit of managerial experience to be able to you know, uh, handle the project effectively. Then you need to be familiar with a variety of standard tools, like I mentioned before, including database, customer relationship management, CRM, 
then you need to be experienced in accounts because most of this um, business management software now have accounting application like the ERP software, which is enterprise source planning software. They are incorporated with accounts, they are incorporated with sales, they are incorporated with customer relationship management with a robust payroll and HRM. You, you, you will see HRM there. So these are part of skills you need to learn. And these skills, you learn it by working with an experienced software implementation consultant. Let me see the next slide. Roles of a database and so that's the second second careers in data management will have there. They work with a database software to find ways to stock, organize, and manage data. Now you know that organizations cannot, you know, maintain a robust software without database. Database is the brain of every um, um, software. There is no software without database because it is is in this database that this all this information are being stored. Then a database administration is one who is trained to manage the data, to organize it, to secure it, and to retrieve information, and to troubleshoot issues as they arise on the data. Then profile reports from those extra reports from the database tables, and then deliver it to what organization. Then they keep, um, keep the database up to date to ensure that the database is updated to its what latest version to avoid inaccuracy of data, because you know that some of these applications now, when they run out of updates, they begin to uh, give uh, wrong information. So the work of a database administration is to ensure that this database is updated on a regular basis, to ensure that it's updated so that company will not retrieve wrong uh, report on the database, because you know that when there is a wrong report, it's going to influence a whole lot of decision making in the company, which can either mar the company or cause serious, serious of problems. So that is why a database administration is very, very important. So you just like a watcher of the database, you watch the database, monitor uh, the, the health and security challenges of the database, and then raise the alarm so that the issues will be resolved on time before it causes uh, harm. Now you can see I have a salary range. Like I said, it's not Nigerian based salary range. This is a salary range based on from the and um, beginners level to expert level. So based on your experience, as you work with them, that are more experienced, learn how to solve related problems. Like I say, this thing is boiled down to solving problem. It's boiled down to solve. So if you, if you know, if you're a database administration and you are there, you're not solving a whole lot of problem. You're not proving your competence by solving problem. You are gonna have issues of a salary increment or uh, becoming promoted to maybe an expert level and experience level. So. All these things are done by years of working and gathering experience and then being committed to the job and then solving lots of problems. These are the things that will make you to work, earn more salaries as what you work with the firm. Let me see the next slide. Next slide, so. Now, qualification to become a database administrator. You need to earn a certificate in computer science or information management. You can earn a certificate in computer science or information. Learn SQL, very, very important. Because you need you to work with uh, SQL, SQL is to query the database and retrieve reports as I went to then Learn operating system manipulation, gain experience, and apply for job. Let me see the next slide. The next slide. Hello? Are you there? Okay. Information security analyst, very, very important. In fact, from my research, I realized that this uh, part of data um, management is on high demand. If you're a good information security analyst, your salary will be up. Their duty is to monitor their organization's network for security bridges and investigate when one occurs. They are the security watcher of the uh, computer um, organization's network. They um, use and maintain software such as firewalls and data encryption program to protect sensitive information. So their work is what? To watch over the information, the data of the company, to protect them from hackers, protect them using firewalls, using various data encryption program to ensure that the information of the company's information is not tampered with. They check for vulnerability in computers and network system. So that's the duty of uh, information uh, security analysts. Let me see the next slide because of time. Let's move faster. Okay, you need to earn a bachelor degree in computer science. You need to also do a course in cybersecurity. 
because computer science is not going to be enough for you to be information security and there are some certain program you need to do under cyber security and computer information system to be able to be qualified to be an information security analyst then gain experience in everything you need to gain experience how do you gain experience my practical way of gaining experience is trying to do free projects because if you are if you want to do paid project nobody no uh, many majority of the clients will want to know what you've done before to be able to give you uh, some certain projects so based on that you need to find yourself free projects do those pr free projects begin to build your portfolio then when you now have some free projects you have done you, you can use it you know to gain job at your past experience let me see the next slide The next one is um, market research analyst. Very, very important. Another um, uh, data management uh, career that is very important. Their work is to research, compile and analyze information on products and market condition to identify potential new markets. They are always, they are like, they, they fish for potential new market through data. They collect data, use it to fish for pot potential new markets sales opportunity and most effective method of marketing specific product that's the work of what market research analyst and this market research analyst does this they, they look for potential new market by data they collect data to know where potential new market analyze the data to be able to know where potential new market is available sales opportunities available and most effective most of the marketing uh, uh, marketing specified world products so that's the work of what market research world analyst um the salary range is from 56 to 93 usd per annum like i said it's not for nigerians it's this research is based on us us salary range it varies it's not fixed let me see the next slide Requirements and qualification to become market uh, research analyst you earn a bachelor in field such as marketing business administration or psychology, and experience in any related role, and then end communication scale. Very, very important. You can't really be a market and a research analyst without communication scale. You must know how to communicate. You must know how to meet, meet people. You, know, you must know how to attract attention. When you meet a client for the first time, you must know how to express yourself, to communicate and pass vital information that will attract clients to have interest in what you are talking about. That's the work of a market. So the person must be very, very outspoken. He should know how to communicate his product to the right client and know how to penetrate the right opportunity. Let me see the next slide. Then software quality assurance analyst. Yes, this is another uh, role in data, uh, Data management that is very, very their main responsibility are to test software quality and predict problems that may occur in the future. These people work with a so, a software developers. After developing software, it undergoes quality assurance analysis. What this quality assurance analysis, by the reason of their skills, they try to examine the software, test the software, predict problems that may occur in the future, which could cause series of issues, and then suggest possible solutions on time before the software enters what life before it goes live for full release that's the work of quality uh, software quality. so they work hands in hand with what software developers to ensure that the software will uh, last it will not um you know it will not crash in near future conduct regular software audit so what they do is that they conduct regular software audit. even as the software is in used companies there's uh, um, software companies are all over the globe usually employ software quality analysts. What they do is that they stand by to work this software to detect problems that occurs along the line while the software is in use and then profile a solution, then recommend the solution. They are not developers, so these people are not developers, but they, they have ability to identify problems using some certain tools. They recommend solutions to developers to work correct using different codes, maintain working knowledge of quality standard, and then Develop and perform quality test process, create, review, and refine user experience documents. So they work with user experience, user information. As users are using the software, they begin to gain review, gather review, 
look at the user's review and then recommend what should be added to correct or to you know uh, put that software to the standard of what user they also by they are part of a uh, by meet, uh, weekly meetings of it department so the software quality analyst is part of it department they are part of what software development team let me see the next slide the next slide please hello are you there can you hear me can everyone hear me yes we can hear you okay we can hear you clearly ma Right. Uh, yes, we'll update and... your slide at once. Okay, please go on. Okay. Sorry. Requirements and qualification to become a software quality stop, 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 relax. Hello. Hello, can you hear me? Relax. Sometimes the next talk will delay the transition okay. of the slide, please. All right, sir. Okay, then. Requirements and quali uh, qualification to become a software quality assurance analyst. To become a software quality assurance analyst, you must obtain a BS in computer science or information services or related field. Strong skill in process analysis. I, I also recommend that the person should have little or some knowledge of coding because you'll be looking at codes, different kind of programs written by software developers. So I think those ones can be earned by experience or by working with a this uh, software developers. But the, first, the first, very first uh, major step to it is you obtain a bachelor degree or maybe related IT certification, then have strong skill in process analysis, excellent attention to detail. You must be a detail-oriented person because for you to be a software quality analyst, analyst to identify problem in, in software, maybe to, uh, reading through the codes to identify potential feature problem, you must be a detail-oriented person and being able to understand both how software is developed and how users will use the software. That is why I mentioned earlier that the person must have the experience of coding. You must learn one or two programming languages, understand it. Even if you don't do it, have a deep knowledge of it, at least you should have a, a peripheral knowledge of it, that when you look at it, you understand how you function, you understand what each of the line of code does. The certification and training in quality assurance process and documentation, but not required by all employers. There are some employers that need you to uh, get a, a, a additional certification and training in quality assurance process because uh, part of what this uh, training does is it helps satisfy you. It helps satisfy you that you are a certified uh, software quality assurance uh, personnel that uh, you, you, you've, been master, you've mastered the process of identifying problem in codes written by software developers and you know how to what sort the problem out and you can recommend what appropriate solution to solve the problem because the hallmark of the whole thing is what recommending a solution if you're a software quality analyst and you identify a problem and you leave it empty that means you have not done anything if you identify a problem you should be able to what profile a solution to that problem you should be able to let the software engineers Look at what you are going to do to solve these world problems. Analysts may be trained on specific software and procedures and used in individual companies with particular software on the world job. So these analysts can be trained. You might just read computer science and be a, a programmer, then not a software quality analyst, but with, by working with software developers or working in a firm related to this job, you can gain that experience. You can gain it by working closely to with uh, this uh, software program, uh, software developers. If you are a detail-oriented person, I, I keep mentioning that word detail-oriented. You know how to spot out problems. You know how to you know deliver results to problem you fish out. Let me see the next slide. Okay, the next one is data analyst. Data analyst they collect. Their, their, their duty is to collect data, clean and interpret data set in order to answer a question or solve a problem. So a data analysis, sometimes when question arises, the major interest of a data analyst, I cannot answer the question until I see all the data related to this question. So the, the, the first step is to what they collect the data. When, I, when, the, when they use the word here, clean, clean means sorting the data putting it in order 
so that the data can be well defined to suit where it should belong. Because most time when you collect data, they are very dated. What I mean that the data is dated is that they are not well organized, they are not clean, they are not well sorted. So data analysts collect the data, sort the data. After sorting the data, then interpret it. You cannot interpret a dated data. So the first thing they do is what to clean the data by what sorting the data appropriately. After sorting the data, they look at the data critically to be able to interpret the data set in order to answer questions related to that data and then solve the potential what problem or already incumbent what problem. So the, 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 the summary or the bottom line of it is that the person should be able to what identify a problem and then what solve it using what data. So data analysts in a nutshell, they use this data, raw data, data data to solve problem, uh, to identify problem and then profile a solution to that problem. They work in many industries, including businesses, finance, criminal justice, they work in all things. Data analysts is everywhere. There is no place now that you will say that, there is no place now that you say that uh, there is, uh, the data analyst is not relevant. There is no thing. That is why data analyst is, in, is, is on a very high demand. You can go and Google what I'm, I'm saying. Data analysts are on a very high demand because there are so many, most of the organizations, especially here in Nigeria, have data data. Their data is not clean. And the people that does data cleaning, they are the data analysts. They are the only people that has the uh, ability to, uh, to look at the data and then clean the data and then interpret it and then solve a problem. So data analyst is a very good you know, career in data management, which if anyone exploits, you, you will love it. You will love it that you have attempted it. And there are there, there are job everywhere for data analysts in all the things. Let me, let me see the next slide. Okay, degrees and domain expertise for data analysts. You must hold a degree in a relevant field. You know, all these things that you need to hold a degree in relevant field. I should have domain knowledge in the area you are working, you are working in. Like for a data analyst now, you need you will be a programmer. You may not be that kind of a, maybe a guru. You mustn't be a guru to be a data analyst, no. I think what the, the only programming language you need to uh, know to be a data analyst is if you know SQL and know Python very well, you are good to go. This programming, th this programming language, they are very easy to learn. In fact, children are learning it. They are doing a whole lot of things to, with it because this uh, Python and uh, especially Python now is used for developing a, a whole lot of things in machine learning, in artificial intelligence. All of these ones are interrelated. So. Once you learn it, you are, you are good to go. You can do a whole lot of things in machine learning. You can do a whole lot of things in artificial intelligence. At, at develop programs that artificial intelligence related. So, um, so the first thing you do is what well, any degree, any degree. That uh, the degree is part of your open door because most of we ask you now, uh, do you have a degree? They will ask you for a degree. Then before any other thing, you know. So if you earn a degree, then try to uh, master the art of programming especially in SQL programming and Python. Understanding of statistics and machine learning algorithm is very, very important. Knowledge of data visualization tools. These are part of really what you need to do to become what a data analyst. And I can beat my chest to tell you that data analyst is one of the most sought after uh, career as I talk to you now. It's one of the most sought after career. If it, data analysts are more needed now than even programmers, software developers. I'm just telling you the truth because most firms, both little and big, they're looking for people that will clean their dirty data. Those data are just there. But this data, when they are clean, they are raw material that can increase the company's income and ever. So firms have realized that data is everything. Data is the new oil. And that is why they are switching to anything, data analysis, data management, all of those things. So if you are a data analyst, you are, you are, you are doing yourself a very good uh, job. All right, let me see the next slide. The next slide, What's the plan? machine learning engineers. These ones are all related to machine learning engineers now. So designing machine learning system. These machine learning engineers, their work is to what? The modern machine learning system. These are the machine learning systems are those systems that behave like human beings. They teach you, they help you learn what you don't know as though they are human beings, but they are, they are, they are programs. 
there are programs written using Python, like I told you now. If you know Python, you can be able to do a whole lot of things in machine learning. It's not just using it as a data analyst. You can do a whole lot of things in machine learning. Uh -huh. Researching and implementing machine learning algorithms and tools. That's the role of a machine learning engineers now. They design machine learning system using Python, especially Python. They use it to design machine learning uh, system. They research and implement machine learning algorithm and tools. Selecting appropriate data set, picking appropriate data representation method. These machine learning engineers, they cannot do anything without data. Machine learning engineers cannot design appropriate machine learning system without data. They try to learn individual, uh, they try to learn people's, uh, collect people's data, clean the data, use the data to model a system that can teach a human being or that can behave like a human being or that can help a human being work and uh, learn one or two things. That's what uh, this machine learning uh, engineer has done. So they are also data, um, data oriented. Identify difference in data decision that affect model performance. Verifying data quality. See, this is part of what they do. They, they try to verify the quality of data before usage. And their salary is very, very, in fact, they're also on a very high demand. Machine learning engineers too. It's very, they are very, because they are, they are there is, there is, we don't have enough machine learning engineers I talked to you now. There are limited people doing machine learning. So because of that, the demand for machine learning is on high. It's on a very high end. So if anyone going into machine learning now, the person will be very, very, as in very lucrative, you will not look for job. Job will be everywhere for you. Job will be asking for you, will be selecting job. Let me see the next slide. The next slide. Okay, requirements and qualification. Machine learning engineering position require at least a bachelor degree or master degree in computer science. Mathematics and statistics. You must know mathematics and statistics because it, it, do, it has a whole lot of things to do with algorithm, calculation. You use data to model algorithm, use data to you know, you know, do a whole lot of statistical calculation before you can be able to model what can behave or can teach human beings. So advanced knowledge of mathematics and data analytical skills are critical components of machine learning engineers background. So if you're a machine learning engineer, uh -huh, I don't even know how many machine learning engineers we have in Nigeria. It's few, it's very, very few. So it's a very good field to exploit in data management. Let me see the next slide. Okay, business intelligence analysts. Business intelligence analysts, they will gather, analyze and compile data. They see work on data needed to identify trends and pattern then make recommendation for businesses. So all these business intelligence analysts, firm uh, employ them to work on their data. They, they gather the data, analyze the data, recommend a, a, a solution to a existing problem found in that data. They play a crucial role in any business, working to capitalize on data and translate it into insight for the company in order to make informed decisions. So, they use data, they transform data into an insight. Some data that are just lying with, they transform it to an insight, which could be what used to make informed decisions and thereby increase company profits. So the whole aim of business intelligence analysts is for profit, profitability. Company employs business intelligence analysts for profitability. They employ them to use their data to increase profits. They identify opportunities for improvement, spot trend, as well as recognize potential issues and offer solutions. Their work is aimed towards improving efficiency, increasing productivity, and driving profit for what the business. That is why you see most firms like banks now, they don't joke with business intelligence analysts because these ones, they do a whole lot of work that improves, improves the organization and then thereby increases what profit for the business. Let me see the next slide. The requirements and qualification to become business intelligence analysts. These are records that are necessary for the operation of the business, but they could be replaced with considerable cost. And okay, that's continuation. Then any degree. The first thing you earn a degree, be some courses on data analysis. Learn programming languages such as Python, SQL, and C sharp. Improve your communication skill and critical thinking skill, database management and reporting. This is what you need to know as a business intelligence analyst. You need to learn programming, but not deeper program like Python and SQL is good to go. Those ones are very easy to learn. Data analysis, learn data analysis and then improve your work, 
communication and critical thinking, thinking skill, and then no database management and reporting. Then you are good to go because these are part of tools you will work with. Management to ask you for all these things. And if, if, if you, some certain reports you need to be query, you need some certain tools like SQL and this Python to provide, provide those reports and then provide a solution to their problem. Let me see the next slide. Logistic analyst, that's the rules of logistic analyst. He or she collects, interprets, and analyzes various types of logistic data, including availability of products, reliability of transport and delivery, and other data related to product supply chain management, sourcing and distribution. So, logistic analyst now interprets and analyzes various data of logistics. He tries to check availability of products, which is part of data he works with, reliability of transport and delivery, and other that are related to product supply chain management. He checks all of these things and ensure that these things are in place. There'll be no bridge, there'll be no loopholes when it comes to what supply chain management. But then he has to work with all these data that are linked like in a chain, in data and chain, supply chain management. Ensure that there is no bridge, there is no gap. These ones are properly provided at a window to deliver this product to the right owner. They maintain database on logistic information. So logistic analyst is one who you will now ask, uh, can you now, I bought a product, so, so, yeah, a product with a product code and the product is having issue or I need to know some certain information or something like that, maybe. You can be able to query the database and pull information about the person that bought so, so product on that date and then supply it to what management. So using those product codes, track product flow from origin to delivery via web-based logistics system. Another appropriate method of monitoring inventory and shipment vehicles. So what it does is tracks the flow of uh, goods in and out of the warehouse, track it via the web from where the goods were dispatched from their you know, location via to, uh, from their base, via to where the goods is going to, and ensure that the goods arrives to the owner without any issues. And where issues occur on the way, it is the work of logistic analysts to ensure that those issues are, are sorted out and the product owners receive their product without any issue. Let me see the next slide. Then requirements and qualification to become a logistic analyst. Bachelor degree in finance, supply chain management, industrial engineering, or related to any of these ones, can, can give you opportunity in what logistic analysis. Previous explained in logistic field, logistic field, extensive knowledge of shipping and distribution chain. And this knowledge now is gathered by experience. Then excellent analytical and problem solving skill. Excellent written and verbal communication skill. Profit, uh, proficient with what? Microsoft Office suit. That's the person should know how to use Microsoft Word, Excel, PowerPoint, if possible, publisher, and then use of email. Persons you know how to work, use email and then communicate effectively. Let me see the next slide. Then the summary. The summary of this presentation is, we, as we all know, that today's digital economy, companies have, have access to more, than, more data than ever before. This data creates a foundation of intelligence for important business decisions, which leads to an increase in demand for career in data management. So the increase in data, data has uh, become, um, data increases on a regular basis as the digital economy continues to grow high, data continues to grow high. And because data is growing high, companies need to work, formulate foundations of intelligence for what? Important business decision using this data because this data now it has become source of income for many companies. I want to summarize by saying that data in a digital world has become source of income. It has become source of profitability for many companies. And the higher, the, the, the earlier we begin to leverage on raw data, clean the data, and then using the data to what? profess different solutions in our firm, and then what increase our profitability, the better. Let me see the next slide. 
which is the last one. I think that's the last one, sorry. The last one is the end of this presentation. Thank you all. And then if you have questions, you can say, drop it in. Okay, thank you very much, madam. Thank you very, very much. We really appreciate what you've done so far. Uh, that was a very insightful section we just had. I believe everyone that was in attendance picked up a lot from everything that has been said. It's been a whole lot. There was actually a lot to learn. There were loads and loads of career pathways for us to you know, look at, take much closer look at. Uh, in this time where it seems to be limitation in regular career opportunities, but there seem to be limitations in regular career opportunities. However, in the area of information management, there are loads, and in the area of data management, there are loads of career opportunities, you know, springing up. So we should all uh, consider uh, taking, you know, advantage of these. Uh, I just want to let us know that we have three executive council members right here who are part of this meeting, are part of this training. So I just want them to quickly unmute and just uh, introduce themselves and greet the house. Let's begin with our president. Please all executive members beginning with our president, kindly uh, unmute and introduce yourselves and greet the house. Thank you. Good evening once again, ladies and gentlemen. Um, You're welcome to the second uh, quarterly training for the year 2022. Um, we are grateful to have you online this evening, and uh, we hope the session so far has um, tremendously added to our wealth of knowledge in the area of data and information management and also expose us to available roles and responsibilities that we actually take advantage of. So on that note, I want to thank you once again and um, allow other executive members to introduce themselves. Thank you. Uh, of course, we still have um, about one more hour to go and uh, there's still another presentation that will be coming after the introduction. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Please, the other executive council members, kindly introduce yourselves. No, sir. Hmm? Um, say no, sir. Uh, channel now. No, sir. No, sir. What is no, sir? Where's your sister? She's not there. What does she Hello, uh, the other executive council members, kindly introduce yourselves. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. My name is uh, Mrs. Rhoda Parindi, the secretary to the governing council. I want to say thank you to everybody who made it out to attend this training. God bless you. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I am, can you hear me, please? Yes, ma'am, we can hear you loud and clear. Okay. Good morning. Uh, good evening, everyone. Good evening, ma'am. Princess Tiwala de Fakunda, the vice president of our great institute. I welcome you all, and I also thank everyone for making it a date with us this evening another learning learning session. I thank the presenter for a job well done. I thank the president for always being there for us, for my co school members. I thank you all for being part of today's program. Thank you very much and God bless. Thank you very much, Ma. Thank 
Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I think there's a third person. Okay, I think we have we've had everyone introduce themselves. So um, at this point, I still want to believe if there's any question very quickly before we take the next session. There's any question on the on the presentation we just had. Any question on the training we just had, kindly, kindly uh, just put up your question. You can speak up. You can also write if you don't want to talk. You can write in the chats. Uh, section and just drop your question. So um, while we are doing that, I, I okay, let's just give that a minute or two. Let's see if anyone has a question. It's very important that we, you know, get clarification if we have questions. So let us take the questions. We'll be, we'll be waiting for a minute or two to get those questions. Uh, yes, please. Anyone who has a question, please kindly go ahead with your question. You can unmute and ask your question for everyone to hear you, or you can just drop it as a chat. Use the chat option, please, and drop your questions. So you can get feedback and then get clarification in areas where you may not have been clear. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to invite our president again, because we'll be going over to the career section. So I'll be speak. I'll be inviting our president for the career counseling session. Uh, our president, you have the floor now, sir. Thank you very much, Shuku. Um, as um, you know. Going by our regular uh, agenda uh, during uh, quarterly training program, uh, the career session is actually a session where we talk about career in data, information, records, content, archives, and knowledge management. But fortunately, tonight we we've actually had a session that has to do with career and data management. And as a result, um, there, there wouldn't be any need for us to take uh, our time unnecessarily on that, other than to encourage us and also to let us realize the fact that um, the new oil and the new gold across the globe now is data. And the fact that uh, data has actually created opportunities where people from different fields regardless of their disciplines, you know, have the opportunity to switch to various uh, disciplines that exist under information management. And I believe our uh, able, uh, able presenter this evening has been able to do justice to that. We've seen a number of um, uh, various opportunities that we could actually take advantage of. Um, you will all agree with me that um, the COVID pandemic has actually, you know, exposed the fact that those organizations that are yet to embrace the digital age, you know, in no time they are going to be left behind. And that has actually informed a lot of um, decision makers, policy makers, government and organizations to have um, impact on digital transformation projects. We've got a lot of uh, digital transformation projects going on in various organizations, ranging from public to private um, organizations. So there are lots and lots of career opportunities that would continue to evolve because businesses are now being driven by data and uh, data not data that exists in manual form, but data that has actually been transformed digitally. And organizations are able to make decisions based on dashboards where they can see what is actually happening within the organizations and able to take informed decisions that would lead to ensuring that they are able to achieve their business objectives seamlessly even at a reduced 
and a minimal cost. So we all, um, I believe you all will agree with me that uh, the digital revolution has actually created as individuals and, and governments. And um, I want to use this opportunity for us all, regardless of what we do or uh, the sector we find ourselves, to take advantage of the digital revolution, try to look at what we're doing presently and identify where, they, uh, where technology has actually come in to disrupt it. Because we need to evolve. Without us evolving, it might be practically impossible for us to be competitive. And in order to be competitive, it means we have to move with the change, which is the digital revolution. And um, as a result of that, lots and lots of opportunities are going to be created in terms of jobs, in terms of projects, in terms of products too. Because these days we have we've got a lots and lots of digital products, lots and lots and lots of uh, millionaires are being made across the globe now. Not because they have a uh, muzzle, not because they have energy within themselves, not because you know they have um, physical attributes you know that would make that happen but simply as a result of the ability to be able to take advantage of the digital revolution and also be able to tap into it and um, identify those uh, 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 niches, you know, that could actually give them opportunity, you know, to uh, put out there whatever product or services that they offer. So, that without taking too much of our time, that is going to be about all we're going to be discussing in the career session. But before we move on to the next um, presentation, uh, we want to allow for another two to five minutes in case we have questions around um, career in data management. Myself and the resource person will be available to respond to your questions. Please feel free, if you want to talk, you can raise your hand, then we ask you to unmute. Then um, if you don't feel like talking to the mic, you can actually put your questions in the chat box. Thank you once again, as um, we expect your questions before getting into the next session. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much for that uh, very wonderful one. We, we really appreciate this. Uh, so kindly, as he has said, anyone that has a question, please do well to indicate by raising your pointer would unmute you and then you can ask your question. Please, uh, if you don't want to speak, like you said, you can also use the chat option. So we'll be waiting for just a few minutes for your questions. We'll be waiting for a few minutes. We have I two. Think, I, I think we have some questions in the chat box already. Okay. Yeah. Um, I'm going to answer the last okay. question. Uh, while I will leave um, happiness to answer the other questions, which I think are related to our presentation. Um, you, the question with uh, thoughts, what are the modalities to ensure electronic data management practices? and sustainability in Nigeria and Africa in general? Um, well, that is a good question. Um, and for me to react to that, I will want to start by um, saying that for us to have um, um, a regime of electronic data management practice uh, in any society, uh, you know, all agree with me that um, it is pertinent for us to have necessary guidelines, procedures, specifications, and most importantly, policies. There, are, there is a need to ensure that we have enabling policies in place. When we have policies, regulations, and laws in place, then it can be sustainable. 
Okay, for example, uh, those of us that attended the last um, webinar, the one we had uh, two days ago, um, we, the, the, uh, the resource person actually presented on uh, data privacy. And um, you all will agree with me that data privacy laws and regulations across the globe has been in existence for some time. And um, Nigeria in 2019 decided to tap into that opportunity by the introduction of the Nigerian Data Protection Regulation, which is a regulation. And as a result, um, ever since that you know, came into being, Nigeria has actually uh, joined the leagues of um, nations across the globe promoting that. So for us to have a regime of electronic document management um, system in place, there will be need for, uh, for us to have laws and regulations in place, which will, which, which will ensure that organizations, regardless of their uh, sector, would have the necessary policies being formulated and also standard operating procedures you know for managing the information life cycle and again apart from the policies and um, the policies and the regulations being in place uh, it is also important for organizations to embark on awareness creation within their individual organizations or firms because um, to take advantage of what uh, uh, the digital revolution has uh, provided, it is pertinent to ensure that employees in various organizations have the basic knowledge when it comes to the management and security of uh, data and information. And without that, it will practically become almost impossible uh, for us to be able to, to sustain all these practices. Because awareness is key, awareness is important, education is key, it is important. And ultimately, for those professionals that are charged with managing our data and information within the enterprise, it is important for them to ensure that they have all the necessary qualifications and certifications you know that would help them deliver as expected so i think uh, if we can have all those in place then um, it will be sustainable not only in nigeria but across africa i hope that um, answered answers your question so i want to call on happiness uh, to also address the other question happiness i just stand your mute Okay, clear enough, sir. Thank you very much for your answer. Please, okay. um, we have other questions. So, all right. Um, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. We can hear you. The first question here says, um, is there any difference between data management and data science? The answer is yes. Like I rightly defined when I was in my position, that data management is practice of collecting and organizing data, protecting and storing it for use. That's for decision-making use. Why data science now is a scientific method or process using algorithm to model a system that can extract information and insight from un unstructured data. So data science is more of a scientific method. It makes use of more of algorithm to model a better way of extracting data data from a bulky data. Why uh, data management is just, let me use the word maintenance of data. You extract the data, collect it, organize it, protect and store it. I don't know if, if that answers the question. Hello? You can go ahead with the second question, please. Okay. The second question here says, um, ah, uh, what about if someone goes for professional program aside bachelor degrees? Yes, you can go for any professional program, certify yourself, 
earn experience and you're good to go. You must not earn a bachelor degree. If you, if you look at what I, I said, bachelor degree or any other related certification. I think that answers the question. The third one is, is it possible for experienced software developer of 10 years to be a software quality um, assurance, um, okay, assurance analyst without going through any further training? Yes, well, yes. well, like I say, as I said, if you are a software developer, you still need to work with an experienced software quality analyst. You could be a software developer who knows how to write code, but you are not good in detailing and uh, maybe um, analysis of a uh, uh, software related issues. Experience in software development is not experience in software quality analysis. You really need to maybe merge yourself with someone who is a software quality analyst who could help you tell you how best to do it. The only advantage you have over someone who is not a software developer is that your learning frame will be different. You, you, might, you, might, you might become a, a, a very good software quality analyst between, uh, for, uh, within a short while because of your knowledge of what software development and programming. You have an added advantage over who just migrated from another field, who will now start learning programming and the rest of them. So I think it's necessary you merge yourself or gather little experience from a software quality analyst. I hope that answers the question. Okay, the next one is, okay, uh, my president have answered this. Each other one. Thank you very much, Ma. I think that's all, okay. Thank you very much. Um, next on our agenda will be the, the, the product presentation. We'll be having a product presentation by a vendor who is already amongst us here. Her name is Uju. Uh, Uju. So please uh, kindly take the floor. Uju will be and begin with your presentation. Thank you. Hello. Hello. Yeah, good evening. Uh, she's she's joining us now. She went to get something, but she's she's logging in now. Okay. Thank you. While we wait for uh, the next um, presentation, um, I want to um, throw more light on this particular um, session, which is called product presentation. Um, to some of us that are familiar with the, our, our quarterly training program, after the regular uh, presentation, we usually invite vendors, you know, to come on board to see advantage of the a RIMA RFK network that used to be in the past, you know, to showcase products and services that they have that might be of interest to attend this. So tonight, it's not an exception. We're having a vendor um, in our midst uh, that will be doing a product presentation. So it is a call on each and every one of us. If we have products, if we have services, that we want the world to know or hear about, this is the platform for that to happen. Uh, the presentation is expected to last for between 15 and 20 minutes. And um, after that, uh, we shall be having a networking session where we all will have opportunity to network among ourselves. We would introduce ourselves, what we do in the chat box, and um, try to share as much information that we want people to know about us. So the, the, this is a, a platform, you know, where we encourage professional interaction, collaboration, and networking. 
So thank you very much once again for your time, for your patience as we move on to the next um, item on the agenda. Okay, good evening, everyone. My name is Suju Obi from AG Mortgage Bank, PLC. I have my colleague here who is um, Mr. Samuel Enejo. We are here to do a, a brief presentation on our products. And um, just as the name implies, we're from AG Mortgage Bank and we sell mortgages. So please, I don't mind. I don't know if you mind me sharing my slide. I've been standby since seven p seven p.m. So sorry, I just came in now because I had to log out to do other things. Please, can I go ahead and share the slide? Please go ahead. You already made a post. All right. Okay, so as the name implies, as I said earlier, we are from AG Mortgage Bank. We are here to introduce our products to you, which will, of course, will be very beneficial. Who are we? We are a mortgage bank with national license, and we have been in existence for over 15 years. We are credited by Federal Mortgage Bank as well as Mortgage Bank of Nigeria. Of course, it includes, it includes our residential mortgages and of course NHF, which is National Housing Fund. In partnering with you, it depends on what you want and then of course what we have to offer you. Why us, AG Mortgage Bank? We develop unique schemes to meet specific housing needs. There is an option of instrumental payments plan, availability of mortgage, Great investment, future capital gain, ability to negotiate when it comes to bulk mortgages, especially when we're looking at number of people involved, then there is tendency for us to negotiate and come to a better understanding with each other. Conversation to NMRC loan. Of course, NMRC is um, a source of funding to mortgage banks and it made the funds to be averagely uh, at lower rates. So when we get quality mortgages, we embody to NMRC so that the mortgage can be more affordable. We also do fees deposit versus mortgage. And uh, that's when we have fees deposit with you and you can as well place, uh, you can as well um, avail mortgage to you. Of course, the rate of the mortgage would be would be relatively low because we look at the spread between the fee deposits and interest rates. And of course, there's no penalty charge for prepayments. If you have a mortgage that's supposed to take to take um, take over three years or five years, then and you decide to pay down within one year, that is very much welcome, and there will be no penalty charge attached to it. And of course. We intend to establish mutual beneficial relationship with our clients. We want to concentrate on NHF option. 
Of course, NHF option is um, is a national housing fund established in 1992 by federal by federal government, and the essence is to make mortgages um, affordable and available to virtually across all Nigerians. The primary mortgage banks at Interface, we are at Interface on behalf of the individual in the sense that it is a non-lending thing. We stand in between you and Federal Mortgage Bank. They don't know you, it's we that they know. So whatever that you want from them passes through us. We process the mortgages and then we submit to them. At the point of approval, it passes through us as well as the disbursement. Individual makes a minimum of 30% APC. Anyway, this has also been reduced, but it depends on the, on the price of the property that you are acquiring, and we'll get to that. The maximum limit for this loan is 15 million. The maximum limit you can get is 15 million and at 6% interest rate. And of course, the maximum tenure is 30 years. It's assumed that at least at the age of 60, you'll be existing whatever position you acquire. So we tie it to the point that you're going for retirement. The purpose of the loan, as I had mentioned earlier, is to buy an existing property. Of course, the property has to be in existence or the construction is ongoing. The aim and ob objective of the National Housing Fund is to provide long-term loans to mortgage institutions for non-lending to contributors of the NHF. I will still come to the requirements that are required. Of course, the essence is to provide long-term loan because any loan that is over five years, 10 years, 20 years to 30 years is a long-term loan. We facilitate the mobilization. This is to ensure constant supply of loans to Nigeria, to encourage the development program and to ensure effective finance financing of the housing development to low-income earners, at least, of course, to make mortgages affordable, especially to low-income earners. Basic requirements for this NHF. Of course, if you want to assess NHF, the basic requirement is that you must be a contributor to NHF, and you must have contributed for a minimum of six months. And we encourage you, as soon as you open an account, to save up your equity. Of course, if you want to assess up to 15 million, if you're qualified to of, um, assess up to 15 million, the equity contribution is 10%, uh, which like, if you want to, if you're able to assess 15 million, you'll be expected to contribute minimum of 1.5 million, which goes to Federal Mortgage Bank, they will see the uh, evidence. Of course, you're making the payment to the developer. However, that depends on the property amount. Let's assume that the property amount is um, 20 million or 30 million. And there, of course, you know that your equity contribution is no longer 1.5 million. But what Federal Mortgage Bank, who is availing 50 million naira to you, wants to see at that moment is the 1.5 million at the point before they disburse. But we that are in charge of, we that are getting that money on your behalf. We also want to see the evidence of the remaining balance that you have paid to the developer. It's either it's routed through us or you pay to the developer and we have the evidence shown to us through a receipt or a statement of our account. This is to ensure that at the end, you do not carry two facilities at the same time. So you ensure that you pay your equity before the disbursement of the fund. The maximum amount available is 15 million at um, single digit in interest rate of 6%, and the maximum tenor is 30 years. And the application, the applicant must be contributor to NHF, and you must have contributed for a minimum of six months. But of course, if you're not a contributor yet, you can contribute as one of. That six months you are meant to contribute at the stretch. You can do it for the fact you are a salary earner and your salary is consistent. You can pay it at once. Once there is an evidence that your salary is consistent, you can still pay the six months at once, and then you will be eligible to assess the loan. And this, the documents required, of course, is um, you have to provide us with the title document of the property you want to buy. You pay a processing fee of one hundred and five thousand. 
which we use to do evaluation, search, chatting, processing fee, and of course, service charge also that goes to Federal Mortgage Bank as well as the application form. You also provide us with your evidence of pay slip and six month statement of accounts. Photocopy of your tax clearance. We also require your offer letter from the developer as well as the location letter. Once we collect these documents, we process, we'll be able to, to ascertain how much that is, uh, you can assess based on your take home as well as the, your age. So once we're able to ascertain that, we forward your document to Federal Mortgage Bank for further processing. Upon, upon getting your approval, we get back across to you and let you know. And then there are other requirements which consist of perfection that you're meant to pay. You're meant to pay for perfection fee, which is actually 1.5 million, which is exactly 10% of your loan amount. If you're able to assess 15 million, if you're assessing less than 15 million, of course, uh, your perfection fee will not be 1.5. Mm -hmm. However, it has to be 10% of the loan amount that you're assessing. And then you pay for insurance and insurance is comprised of credit life or mortgage insurance, as well as fire insurance. And then you pay an upfront fee of 1%. But that's at the point that we have gotten your approval and we exchange an offer letter to you to, to communicate to you that we are at the age of disposing. Aside to NHF disbursement. You must deal with a developer that already has an established relationship with Federal Mortgage Bank in the sense that that developer must have an interim security with Federal Mortgage Bank. That is either a global title of the property you're buying from or an alternative, but that we're able to cover the entire loan amount that we are processing on behalf of subscribers. So once these things are put in place, your approval is sure. You get approval within six months to nine months, and of course, disbursement comes um, subsequently. And of course, we say the known fact is better to pay for mortgage than to pay rent because mortgage is an investment. So we encourage everybody, especially starters, to go in request for mortgage. Nigeria is not known for mortgages, but we are trying to create the awareness for people to know that it pays to assess mortgage than paying for rent because rent is very expensive and can never be recouped. Thank you very much. I'm open to questions. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you for, that, for the presentation. Uh, before we move on to the next item on the agenda, I'd just like to encourage us, like the president has said, to make sure we take very good advantage of this product presentation section. It's actually a good platform, like he said, for us to let the world know what we are all doing at our professional organizational levels. And um, at this point, I'll quickly uh, introduce us to the next item on the agenda. The next item we have on the agenda. I think we have some, uh, somebody is raising his hand. Oh. You can unmute and ask his question, please. Okay, hey, yes, 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 yes. Okay, please, if you... Please, Raphael, allow you kindly go ahead with your question. I think we can proceed if he's not ready with the question. Right. Yeah, yeah, I don't know if that's today. Okay, there are some questions in the chat box, I think. 
Hello? Hello? Yes, please, go ahead, sir. Go ahead, please. Oh, okay, my question is on the, I, I want to appreciate the presenter for the mortgage loan facility. Uh, my question is on the aspect on one, the developer, how we want know a developer register with the mortgage uh, bank because it's not stated in your presentation. Is it part of the guidance that you're going to give us? And you also mentioned the issue of processing fee. Uh, the processing fee is very fundable because that's, I think you mentioned about one, one and something thousand. So is it refundable? That is, if at the end you are not able to, you, you are not successful with the with the application. So we need to know before one double into it. Okay, thank you very much for the question. Well, uh, when it comes to developer having a um, um, interim security with Federal Mortgage Bank, um, you, we do our due diligence. First of all, we have to ensure that the developer has a track record in terms of construction, it doesn't, the, the, the quality of construction is well recognized and acceptable. And of course, he has to have an interim security with federal mortgage, but because your approval will not even be processed. So that is why we encourage um, subscribers, off takers to, to we, we introduce them to a varieties of developers. However, if they have a developer among themselves, the developer should as well initiate a relationship with Federal Mortgage Bank. So it's either you, you choose from a pool of the developers that has property scattered all over Nigeria, especially Abuja, Lagos, and Enugu. And where we, because of proximity, where we can always go for due diligence to do confirmation and inspection. We are at least that's where we have branches as well. Of course, we also extend it to Calabar, um, depending on your choice area. So we have developers we deal with. If you have your own developers, your developer has to be registered with Federal Mortgage Bank and as well have a relationship with Federal Mortgage Bank in the sense that he has to provide security, security in respect of the disbursement that he'll be expecting. So when it comes to the processing fee of 105,000, it's not refundable in the sense that the, pro the processing fee is actually used for the processes that we go through while processing your NHL. We do search, we do credit bureau, we do valuation, we buy the, the application form that your names will be written on. And of course, we pay service charge to Federal Mortgage Bank and we pay processing fees to Federal Mortgage Bank as well. And we pay, um, there's another fee we pay to Federal Mortgage Bank. This, it has breakdown. So at the end, there's no one penny spent out of that 105,000. That is why it is not refundable. However, there's no reason why your application will not be approved because we try to get it right. We do due diligence, we make sure we profile uh, the customers and tell them any loopholes. An NHF um, application comes in batches. You must be at least, it's meant to be at least minimum or maximum of 10 people in a batch. And there's no how we can send the documents if one document from anybody is missing. So in the complete batch, every document must be complete before we can be able to to submit your documents and follow up for uh, subsequent approvals before disbursement. All right, thank you. Well, the reason why I ask the question is that uh, a, a subscriber we need to pay processing fee, and also want to ask why the need for the payment of is it one percent or five percent? Uh, is it completions or when the customer will be given to the subscriber? So is that not a double charges? You know, after somebody else. One, which okay. ones? Please come again. You made some. You made. Yeah, you said uh, the uh, when it is uh, when the made the request of the subscriber has been approved by the mortgage bank. Yes. When the document is to be given to the subscriber, there is going to be charged a certain percentage again. Is that not a double charges? No, it's not a double charge because every charges it has this um. Uh, parameters for it. Like I said, you'll be charged 10% of the loan amount, which is 
tattoo tree and it yeah. is perfection fee. You can even Google FMBM uh, portal, you will see 10% of the loan amount, which is charged for perfection. Then you pay insurance. Insurance is also statutory. It's what you have to pay. And you paid for two types of insurance because we need to cover you as a person in case something happens to you. And of course, we need to cover the property that you're buying. Then another thing that you pay at the end of the transaction, when we must have given you an offer letter, which is the only thing that comes to the bank, is 1% of the loan amount. It used to, we used to charge 3% of the loan amount. But CBM, based on that, we are on the watchful eyes of regulators. We are highly regulated. So it was slashed to 1%. So at the end, you can see the difference between 3% to 1%. So at the end, but we have to do it because we believe that we are touching lives. So the essence is that we make sure that people get a home affordable homes for themselves. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, thank you very much. Thank you, Madam, for the presentation. Please, no. um, to save our time, to save our time, uh, further questions should be sent to um, membership at imafrica.com. And uh, please, uh, the instructor or the presenter should also take note of the questions that have been asked in the uh, chat section and handle them privately as we continue with the next section we have or the next item we have on our agenda so we have the networking section right now so kindly feel very free to introduce yourself uh, introduce yourself professionally tell us what you do you know what and and sorry please space. somebody asked question sorry about having the breakdown of the requirement this can also be forwarded to the to the organizer, we can get it across. Yes, I, I mentioned that questions should go to membership at imafrica.org. And then, oh. yes, so we, it's, it's uh, our next session now. So kindly okay. feel free. I can also, Somebody is asking for our contact. This can also be disseminated later. Please, our contact and our email can be shared. Thank you very much, sir. Um, Ahmed Ogbara, I, he was raising his hand. You can quickly ask your question while others are doing the introduction in the chat box. Ahmed, you can sit there. You can okay. Um, hello, good evening. Can you hear me? Go ahead. Yes, we can hear you, sir. Okay. Um, good evening, Mr. President. Um, thank you very much for um, giving me the honor to at least ask um, this, uh, my simple question. Um, thank you for the coordinator and then thank you for the presenter. Um, what I want to just ask is that, um, is there a minimum with respect to, um, as a salary earner, what is the minimum that you, um, your, um, organization we um, collect from uh, or require from uh, a salary earner to apply for this part of um, this uh, mortgage. There is no benchmark to your salary. Even people that earn as low as hundred thousand, fifty thousand, hundred thousand. Once you are eligible to assess, and once you are a contributor to NHF and you've contributed for a minimum of six months you are qualified. However, why profiling you, we can be able to ascertain how much you can assess. Some people can assess 5 million, some can assess 7 million, some can assess 10 million, why some can assess 15 million, depending on your salary. Okay, all right, yes. thank you. Um, then my second question is that, um, I know you talk about um, insurance, um, yes. where you have to, if you are doing this mortgage, so in the event in the event that um, you you've collected the mortgage and then in the, and at that point um, that, that, that person um, died, so what uh, what is the what's going to happen at the end of the day? You um, yes, I would like know. to actually know that. Yeah, the insurance has um, like credit life or mortgage protection covers you up to death, uh, impairment. Uh, permanent disability and of course loss of job 
So if you're dead, of course, when you're filling your document, you have nest of kin. So automatically we recognize the, the, your nest of kin as the owner of the property. And of course, insurance take over because it's part of what was covered in the insurance. So if, if what about if I'm not able to um, pay the money be, before the, this incident happens? What happens? Uh -huh. Well, of course, you know how insurance works. You have to be up to date with your payment before anything happens. Okay. Okay. All right. No problem. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, Mr. President. Okay. okay thank you very much. I guess what he's trying to clarify is that it's not as if, if the person had not paid up to date. If the person had paid up to date, but still having, you know, outstanding, like uh, if the if it's supposed to last for 10 years and the person has paid up to like before the incident, what happens? That's what I said, sir. I said insurance takes over your repayment. That's the essence of doing insurance. Okay. If your, if your apartment catches fire, insurance repairs it because that's the essence of covering it, doing fire and special periods. And if like, just like during the NSAS, we have a case whereby those people that uh, the protesters went to the extent of destroying most of the houses that were covered with mortgage. Of course, our accredited insurance has to come into the picture to, to repair those uh, bear deals costs because they're under insurance cover. So once we are you are under insurance cover coverage, whatsoever that happens, be it uh, sudden death, God forbid, but be it death, be it impairment, be it loss of jobs. But if it's loss of jobs, in, insurance covers for a minimum of six months because I believe that you will have within six months to get another job. But if uh, aside loss of job, any other thing, whereas that they make the, they make the complete payments. That is the insurance agreement we have. Okay, ma. Thank you very much, Madam Chukudi. Please, can you ask a question? Um, we are almost, um, you know, out of time now. Chukudi. Okay, thank you. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, yes sir. Please, can hear you. Okay. Good evening. So, someone just informed me about this webinar about um, five minutes ago, or maybe or just a little above five minutes ago, and I. And, and I, I joined, so I didn't get what it's all about. She, I'm fact, the guy was regretting that he hadn't told me about it. So my question is, would you uh, would you share the this uh, the that's this this seminar? Would you would you share it uh, after the the recording after this meeting? Like we have stated, you need to send email to a particular email address that's our training department uh they will attach uh, to, yes uh, in the course of trying to join i was asked to register so I, I all my information was given there my name my email address does that count or is there a particular mail i need to send uh, it, um especially uh, yes yes please am, yes okay. membership at i am i i am dot org that's africa membership as i am africa dot org after the, I, I, sorry, could you could you put it on the chat? Could you put it on the chat box for okay, me? Yes, please. I'll drop it here in the chat box immediately. Yes. Uh, just take note of it. Membership as I I am Africa. I, I haven't seen it. Have you put it there, man? It's there. You get it shortly, please. I'll go ahead with the session. We have a few minutes to go now. Okay. All right, please. Now three minutes to round up. Thank you. Networking session. Please can leave the chat or unmute yourself and speak out. Okay, sir. So can we take our leave now? Yes, you have yeah. Yes, you are free, madam. All right. Thank you, everyone. Bye. Uh, for those of us that I want to network, we have the possibility of introducing ourselves. You can unmute and introduce yourself or put your business or contact details in the chat box. We have less than uh, two minutes to go. It's nice having you all around.
Thank you, everyone. We look forward to having you again um, next quarter. Uh, by the special grace of God, do have a wonderful evening. Oh, oh, and, um, oh. Warm regards to the families. Oh, oh, oh.